Your calendar is your personal philosophy. A picture of you and everything you care about. That's why we aren't dreaming of a better calendar. We're dreaming of everything a calendar can be. January and calendar apps are like fish and chips. They're so popular and they come really, really rapid. We've had a lot of them so far. Hey Calendar, Notion Calendar, and there are more on the cards. More on the cards, Amy Calendar is releasing today and we're gonna give you the deepest review out there as it launches today to give you a perspective of whether this is your next calendar application. I'm gonna show you everything I loved and everything I hated in this video and everything in between and comparing it to other calendar apps on the market to give you an idea of whether it's right for you. Now, Amy has a gorgeous mobile application in integration with Apple Health and a few more exciting features. So we're gonna dig a little bit deeper into in today's video. Hello everyone, my name is Francesco. If you're new here, hit subscribe. It would be honestly great to have you. We do productivity tool reviews. So if you wanna go over to Tool Finder, you can search across all the calendar apps. If you walk away from this video a little bit confused about what calendar app you want, you'll be able to find the perfect one there. But there's also a deep dive in Amy on there that goes even deeper than this deep dive. <laughs> so what is Amy? It's a calendar application that has light task management and integrations as well. It is a very fresh off the block calendar, but it's actually been in beta for two years now. And it is available on the likes of iOS, macOS, and web at full launch with plans to add Android and Windows. It is a partnership with Open Purpose, which is a design studio that create beautifully designed stuff. And they've worked in partnership with them to release this design. And that's one of the things that drew me to it. And one of the things that has impressed me about this application so far. So I want to start about things uh, I really liked and then we'll talk about the things that I didn't like so much. And the first thing is, it is a very snappy app in terms of performance. You'll notice when adding a task or adding a uh, event, it's very fast to add and that's really good news. When I compare calendar applications, uh, I see this uh, sort of firsthand, it's like a snappiness score. And this is a good to excellent snappiness score. I see this uh, with other calendar applications that are really uh, very popular, and this is a very fast one. The other thing I quite like about it is the information you add to new events and tasks. They don't pour over a huge amount of space to make you fill out what it feels like a form. I hate when calendar apps do that. It gives you a small little modal to add in the key information on every single event. You can connect it with the likes of Google Meet, Zoom, and a few more, and it also has some of the regular abilities you expect, like the way to uh, set all day, repeating, and even invite guests as well, including suggestions. So it's really nice in this application because you get the ability to see three types of view. In desktop version, you can see tasks, you can see calendar, and you can see tasks and calendar, which is really nice. And overall, the design of this is really, really nice. The top right hand corner, you can start inviting people to meetings, or you can set up a meeting with a colleague straight away from there. You can even copy a few suggested times in your calendar and share them with people externally as well. Now the task management side of stuff, it's very basic, but has some stuff that I really like, like subtasks, duration, and the ability to schedule in the Amy Pro experience. And that's a really nice addition, but the real power comes from the integrations. You can connect it with the likes of Todoist, TickTick, Things3, and that's great news. And I didn't expect the integrations to work this well, but I connected up Todoist to Amy, uh, so that any Todoist task come into Amy, and it worked really smoothly. And I was able to drag tasks into my inbox from Todoist to be able to have them straight away there. And you can also create lists as well in here if you want to break your task down even further. So impressed with the integrations, although that is a limit in Amy Pro, which I'll talk about now in between what I did like and what I didn't like. Amy Pro is their premium pricing and it's priced at 15 bucks per month. And they do have an annual pricing which is $12.50 per month, which is billed annually. They do have a Believer plan, which is a five-year plan for 500 bucks, which I believe makes the package considerably cheaper. I definitely didn't fail maths at school, but it's, it's one to uh, make note of if you're very good at maths. <laughs> 
So other things on the desktop version I really liked was uh, the way that you can search at the bottom and it pops up with your upcoming events as well as the weather, which was very nice based on your location. You can also go in settings and change a lot of stuff like appearances, what apps you've got connected and much, much more. There's even an early access section as well to test new features that Amy are releasing or um, not sure about releasing. And I really don't want to move on until I talk about the mobile application. Originally, I saw the mobile version on Twitter and I thought, I don't think that's going to work. But they do this really interesting combination of in interaction where you can uh, move between your tasks and your calendar just by moving the sort of marker in the middle. And you can add tasks and you can even drag tasks onto your calendar. You can see views in full mode or uh, full task or full calendar mode. And actually very impressed with the experience on there. They even have an integration with Apple uh, Health that allows you to see and connect up with Apple Health data so that things like sleep, things like workouts, HR, heart rate, and uh, even meditation get brought into your calendar. So it's more like a timeline of your day versus a uh, sort of just a calendar app. Now, to be honest, I have a few things that I don't like, <laughs> surprisingly. Um, I hated the Spotify integration. I don't know whether it's because I've got a three-year-old or whether I just don't like seeing or don't see the value in the feature. But there's a feature where you can connect and integrate with Spotify, which is switch-offable. So just to note that, that you can see any of your music played across a period of time. I don't like it. I think it's pointless. But there are more integrations that make me more appealing to me, like Netflix, where you can connect it up with your Netflix account and see what shows you watched in a period of time in the evening. I like that because that's more helpful than the Spotify one. I think it's because I've got a three-year-old, but let's see. I'm sick of George Ezra coming up. <laughs> I'm sick of it. <laughs> Other things uh, that I didn't particularly like about the experience, um, I would probably say the pricing is very steep. If you compare it to some of the other calendar apps on the market, um, it's definitely a lot more pricey. But calendar apps tend to get a lot more pricier recently because they're focusing a lot on the task management aspect of it and making your calendar this daily planner experience, which a lot of people are liking. And we're seeing it with apps like Morgan, who's growing, who are getting the more steeper pricing, but are adding more ways to manage your tasks alongside your calendar and time block more effectively, which I feel like this does well, but it doesn't do as well as other apps on the market. And that leads me on to my final con of Amy, I feel like one of the things I don't like is the fact that they're going to be focusing on a s email client. Whilst I'm being told it's a simple email client and I'm not actually able to review it in this video, but if I do manage to get to it before then, I'll put it in our tool finder review, which will be below. Apparently this email experience allows you to manage your inbox and sort of get things going with your Gmail. And to be honest, I'm not entirely sure I like that as a general experience, only because I feel like they should be focusing much more on the task management aspect to focus much more on being more like Aki Flow and Motion and Sansama. There's a much more of a market there than I believe to be calendar to email, if that makes sense. It makes more sense for an email app to add a calendar than a calendar app to add an email. But I'm completely, maybe I'm completely wrong. I might have been the same about the bloody mobile application. I remember seeing the designer was like, that's rubbish. So don't fully trust me, <laughs> although my opinions are like, uh, you know, mixed in the productivity space. Um, but I don't think that way works around. So just something to note, because uh, that's why they're probably going to focus a lot of their development time next in the future. So as I'm doing this review, I have managed to get access to the email. Now emails get brought in into the same area as your tasks and essentially you can start to see that I've got 15 emails here. Now you can do a few things with them. You can click done or schedule them, meaning that those who use email a lot as their sort of task management system can even drag them into their schedules so that there's some association there. And you can even reply back to emails. Here's one I sent earlier to myself and there's a nice little timeline function which allowed you to see the communication and go backwards in it, as well as any attachments that you can find or links that are related here. Now over here, you can copy the title, duplicate, even schedule it, Mark has done and I'm read. But if you do want to reply, I believe you go into the email and swipe right and you can respond here. Now I'm going to send this and just see what it looks like largely in the regular client, but this is what it looks like inside of your Amy email account. 
Now, to be honest, it's way too early days to really give this a full opinion, but it is what it is on, said on the table. I would say this is more of a functional task management ability than it is a fully fledged email experience, which they've said they know it is uh, just to be aware of, but this will be available as pro and I think they want to expand on this feature functionality. So I did test this and it did send an email back and it formatted all very well inside of the email client, very smoothly, very fast. So how does Amy compare to other calendar apps and is it right for me? So let's start with how it compares to other calendar apps. I'd probably point this uh, in between a combination of Rise Calendar, Mayday, and Morgan, which are all calendar applications that have some form of task management in there and some brilliant user interfaces. Rise Calendar, maybe not so much on the task management, but largely these applications are probably the most similar to likes of Amy. I'm impressed with Amy and what it's doing. Um, I initially didn't think it would be this well polished, this well built, and actually it is. It's done a very good job of that. Um, but the premium pricing is probably, out of all of these options, the steepest of them all. So this is something to note when looking at Amy, is it's going to be, if you decide to go to Amy Pro, the most expensive of these options. But the pricing isn't largely or vastly different to some of these other apps. Amy. Uh, compared to Morgan is not like night and day. It's actually probably only three or four dollars per month difference if you look at it collectively. So is Amy right for you? Now, whilst they're releasing a Windows and an Android version, I would say this is probably best for the all round calendar user. Someone who wants a reliable calendar, one that's great on mobile, and the one that's a bit more playful, that's at the center of their experience. And being able to connect with Apple Health, Spotify, and even some of the other applications is, is really nice, and they work very well with a fair attention to detail here. Um, I would say this is probably best, not for the time blockers, but for those who want just a solid calendar experience that works all around, and that has some interesting development plans in the future. It's really hard to place these calendar apps in the moment because there's so much vast in change in the space. And if you want to check out all of the calendar apps, including Amy, you could jump over to Toolfinder and really explore them all in much more detail. So that was my review of Amy. I'm impressed. I liked it. I wasn't expecting to like it as this much as I do, but it actually has impressed me. Um, it is a very interesting option for 2024. So I look forward to diving into it in much more detail soon. If you want a more extensive review, jump over to Toolfinder, and I hope you enjoyed this video. So drop a like, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you all very soon, I'm sure. Cheerio.